Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. John Gluckman from Six Wave Innovation. How are you today? Fantastic, Tracy. Nice to be with you again. And for all of you out there that are following the revitalized cannabis sector, you're going to love this discussion. We're going to talk about nanotech, and we're going to talk about cannabis and how you might get involved in a much more an innovative and exciting way. So let's start with the Biden uh, election win. I'm not sure we can we can say that quite yet, but... You know, many of us are acknowledging that Biden is the new president. And with that, we've seen an increased interest in the cannabis sector. Can you tell us what you think with regards to the cannabis sector as a scientist, entrepreneur, CEO, and co-founder of Six Wave, please, involved in this sector? Yeah, uh, we're really excited. Uh, I think that in addition to the Biden win, it was pretty clear that uh, the referendums on the state ballots in the United States were extremely positive and forward-looking for the future of cannabis and significant expansion in the United States, which is obviously a huge market. So we're really excited by, by both those things. We see it as a tremendous opportunity for, uh, for LPs to expand their footprints into different spaces and certainly for uh, new equipment requirements, uh, which will include affinity. So we're, we're stoked. Well, speaking of stoked, I actually invested some time going through, you know, the information on the affinity. And because our investors are always interested in capital, revenue, etc., even though I'm dying to talk to you about how big this market is, etc., did I read this right that the affinity could basically be bringing in six wave 100,000 a month? Did I read that correct? Yeah, that is correct. So, we um we're, we're kind of taking an approach that uh, helps us partner more with the LPs that are in the processing business. And the way we do that is we make sure to get them our equipment at, uh, you know, a very small profited margin, you know, almost at cost. But what we sell them then is a, a total system performance license. And what that does is it brings us into, we make money when you're making money, we're all engaged in the enterprise of making sure that the LP is profitable. And so we simply take a small amount of money from them based on their production on an ongoing basis. For that, they get upgrades, they get full maintenance, we monitor the equipment remotely for them, we can do optimization remotely, and we have teams standing by to, to help them if something goes down and make sure that they get back into revenue production. Even with that cost, the savings that we offer to the LP, the increase in productivity that they can get are far greater. So we've done some recent analysis on this with uh, looking at uh, specific pricing and things like that. And even with our costs for the TSPL program, it looks like we're selling the, uh, you know, saving the LP somewhere around 50% of their production cost. So that's a substantial savings for them. Okay, many of us, some of us, I know I did, missed out on the cannabis uptick. Okay, I mean, I, I introduced T-God to their lawyer that put that deal together. I, I, I was involved in with Aurora first round, but for some reason I missed out on that. So the knowledgeable investors that were in in the first round and those of us that do not want to miss out on the second round, we've got, what, 35 states now that are legalized in the U.S.? Is this correct, John? I'm not sure if that's the right number, but I'll take it from you. Okay, well, that's the number that I read last night. Also, so in reading this, your process, your nanotech, your, your MIP extraction process, correct? Yeah. Okay, correct me here, John, because, you know, we've got to get this right for the Investor Intel audience. It's okay for me to be wrong, but, you know, we need to make sure we understand this. It's my understanding that it will... It takes the input materials, okay? It runs it through the solution, right? Yeah. And then you extract the specific cannabinoids. And what makes your cannabinoid distillate so competitive is the pure purity. Is that correct? Right. So we, because, again, we're using a synthetic uh, molecular imprinted polymer, what we've done initially is keyed that so that we can take any of the process inputs, whether... 
uh, we're working with uh, a, a cannabis extractor that's working in supercritical CO2, a hemp producer that's working in uh, cryogenic ethanol, and even, uh, you know, there are producers that are still working with hydrocarbon extraction. At the end of that primary extraction, they end up with a, a crude extract. It's, uh, you know, uh, black tar, essentially, uh, but made of cannabinoids. And uh, in order to process that to get to the ability to incorporate that, say, into edibles and drinkables, or vapes, uh, where they need to have a very consistent and high purity product, they go through a number of process steps. We kind of eliminate all of those. They simply have to dilute the crude pass it through our cannabinoid attracting uh, uh, molecular imprinted polymers. We gather all of the cannabinoids and leave all of the rest of the impurities that aren't wanted into the waste stream. And they can then recover the terpenes later if they want to do that. And we give them back then a high purity distillate. As we continue with the upgrades to our beads, will also have the ability to independently separate the different cannabinoids. So as you're following this market, you'll know that yes, we all want the CBD and THC, but there are also tremendous medical advantages and, and bystander effects that come from some of the secondary cannabinoids, which are very high value like CBG and CBN and THCV. And so as those, um, cannabinoids find more production in the biomass, we'll be able to do independent separations. And at that point, we're replacing uh, even a final conditioning step called chromatography. Okay. That all sounds very interesting to me, but just cracking this down for us investors at Investor Intel as we look at different competitive, uh, innovative players in the market. And of course, Six Wave um, already has a, a deal in place with the Affinity System with a company called Green Envy. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we're very excited. We're uh, just getting ready to uh, have them come later in the month to uh, do a, uh, a site review of the first piece of equipment that they'll take, and we hope to deliver that still here uh, before the end of the year. All right, so with your deal with Green Envy, for instance, uh, can I ask, or dare I ask, when, when are we gonna see revenue for shareholders at you know, Six Wave with this particular deal? Well, you know, assuming everything continues on schedule, we should be starting the initial revenue generation in December and really ramping that up through the first of the year. Um, and we expect to be delivering uh, three, three pieces of equipment to Green Envy uh, within the first quarter. And we're, uh, we're gonna be rapidly expanding the, the delivery customer base. We have a huge amount of interest in this. You know, one of the great things about, you know, you were asking about uh, investment in, in cannabis and having missed the, uh, the first wave perhaps. You know, the very interesting thing now is, you know, what we've seen is that the growers are all growing. The, the technology to be implemented for that is all well known now. You know, we're, we're like the pick and shovel people of the cannabis industry. And so, uh, you know, they're the guys that always make the money at the end. It's not always the miners, but it's always the pick and shovel guys. And so as these new states come on board, uh, they're all going to need new uh, licensed producers to come into the states. You know, that's one of the unique things about the United States so far is that uh, without a federal mandate and federal legalization, every state is going to have to have their own growing and processing capability. There is no ability yet to transport cannabinoid products across state lines. And so that gives us even a larger market opportunity right now is that still you know, panning out. And we don't see that changing, you know, in the very near term. So we're really looking forward to it and, and scaling up significantly next year. So for those of us out there who may have perhaps missed out on the first cannabis wave, can you tell us why your technology is competitive with many of the other technologies that are currently in the cannabis sector? Absolutely. I mean, one of the fundamental things that we do, you know, this molecular imprinted polymer, this nanotechnology, it could be used in a million different places. Our focus is to come out with products that really help our customer. You know, 
they've got to do something significantly better for our customer than what can be done today. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for us to invest in it. And cannabis is one of those uh, one of those markets where you know it's been a kludge of machinery and equipment that have been used for lots of purposes, but isn't really suited well for this purpose. And that's why we focused on this market. And we do offer all those advantages and they are uh, being noticed. So we're excited. Well, as always, John, thank you so much for an update and letting us know what's happening with Six Waves Affinity. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks again for having me.